while the DNC has blamed inconsistencies in results reporting for the chaos in Iowa, they have not gone into detail about what those inconsistencies are. We do know, however, that the party was trying out a new system that appears to have been overwhelmed and in some cases not completely tested. So as CBS chief Washington correspondent Major Garrett reports, uncertainty and embarrassment are all that remain. We know there's delays, but we know one thing. We are punching above our weight. Democratic contenders, shocked by the lack of results, rallied their supporters to cheer what might be. By the time it's all said and done, Iowa, you have shocked the nation. When those results are announced, I have a good feeling we're going to be doing very, very well here in Iowa. But the mess in Iowa means the battle for the Democratic nomination has stumbled out of the gate. I gotta say, I'm a numbers guy. We're still waiting on numbers from tonight. Iowa Democrats were stunned and confused. I don't really understand. It's, it's pretty vague when we're just told that the results were delayed and there's no reason given. In the end, like, there are numbers. So where are the freaking numbers? Precinct chairs reported glitches with an app that was supposed to be used to send results to the party. Tina Weber, precinct secretary of Waukee 2, said she had to rely on other methods. We couldn't have people waiting in that room packed in hot just because the app wasn't working. Those who tried to call in their results experienced long holds. Thank you for calling the Iowa Democratic Party's caucus hotline. All of our representatives are currently busy. In a statement, the Iowa Democratic Party said this was simply a reporting issue. The app did not go down and there is not a hack or an intrusion. The day before the caucus, we asked state party chairman Troy Price if he had any fear about tech glitches or other problems. Do you have a nightmare scenario and if so, what do you do about it? <laughs> these are probably the most prepared we've ever been as a party for these caucuses. We've run through a few different scenarios, but I can tell you we're ready. Former presidential candidate Julian Castro, now a supporter of Senator Warren, said the delay proves one thing. That this simply is not the way that we can do this. It was a complete mess. Dallas County Democratic Party Chair Bryce Smith tried to put the best face on things. It's better to get the information right the first time than to three days later go, oh, actually, you know, this is what happened. But as the night wore on, candidates shifted their attention to the next contests. East to New Hampshire and then west to Nevada. So it's on to New Hampshire. <laughs> Nevada, South Carolina, and well beyond. And earlier this morning, my colleagues at CBS This Morning spoke with presidential candidate Pete Buttigieg. Here's what he had to say about the delay. It's safe to say nobody's more impatient than I am, given how fantastic uh, everything we've seen was coming out of last night. Uh, but what we do know is that there is a paper trail uh, that they'll be verifying this based on paper. And uh, uh, given uh, uh, whatever happened technically, that's good news. CBS News 2020 campaign reporter Adam Brewster is standing by in Des Moines. So, Adam, have you been hearing any indication about when they might release these results? On an early morning call this morning, it was about 1 in the morning central time, so 2 o'clock eastern time, uh, Iowa Democratic Party Chair Troy Price gave a brief statement to reporters over a conference call where they said they expect to have the results out sometime today, that they were going through and independently tabulating, uh, checking those uh, backup paper, uh, the paper trail that you heard Mayor Buttigieg reference there uh, that they had. Uh, there was a call that they had with the campaigns just before they talked to reporters. Resources on that call said that they were told the results would come out sometime today, but it wasn't clear quite when exactly that would be happening. And you, of course, have been speaking with party officials on the ground. What are you hearing from them about what happened? Are they stressed out? Are they concerned? What are they saying? So to get back to what uh, Troy Price was saying, he, he said last night, as you heard in Major's piece, that they said this was a reporting issue, not a hack, not the app going down, and that they were concerned about the integrity of the results. Uh, I called several county chairs, uh, we called several county chairs last night around Iowa, some who expressed frustration uh, with the process. They said, some said that they had precinct captains, precinct chairs uh, who were able to use uh, the app and report their results, but then there were issues with it sometimes afterwards, and those who weren't able to use the app 
were calling in. Many had long waits, some waiting over an hour, some had calls that got disconnected. Uh, so there was a feeling uh, of frustration from some of those uh, county party chairs and the caucus chairs, the people who were leading those caucuses who had to report the results back uh, when there were issues with uh, the reporting of the app. Uh, that then there were delays on the phone lines as uh, that was the backup option. Have you seen this app? Do you know how it worked and how it was tested out? So the app was designed to report all three numbers that they were going to be putting out. The party was, which was, you know, a popular vote, uh, two sets of popular vote numbers, and then the delegate numbers uh, that would ultimately determine who the winner was. Um, as far as testing the County, some county chairs we spoke to yesterday said when they were testing it with their precinct leaders last week and in the days leading up to the caucuses, they had issues downloading it, logging into it, running test results, and they told their people if they were having those issues, just go ahead and call in. That's the method that's been used before, and, and some of those county leaders said that they expected that that hotline was going to be able to work again. Now, some other county chairs that I spoke to said they never had any issues with the app when they were testing it. And the first issues they had were last night. Uh, one county chair said that he had issues on his first two tries, was able to get it through on his third try. Mm. Uh, so as far as the testing, there was a bit of a mixed result. But some of those signs started to show within those county leaders, and they were just telling people, just go ahead. If the app doesn't work, you've got a number, you know the drill, and you can call it in. And we know you spoke with... Iowa's Democratic Party chair Troy Price before the caucus and he told you he was confident in this whole process. So what are the next steps as far as the party officials having to deal with what happened? All right, kind of the same message that he told Major, he told reporters before he didn't really have any fears, uh, you know, about what might happen, that they were prepared for any situation that was going to be thrown. He's always said this was going to be the most successful and transparent caucuses uh, in Iowa's history. And now that they're at the point where they are just going through and checking that entire paper trail that that created. Uh, they had people filling out uh, presidential preference cards this time, which had them write the candidate uh, who they supported, uh, both uh, on their first support and if they had to go support a second candidate, who they supported on that second support. So they are tracking down and manually verifying that paper trail. Uh, some county leaders are going through and trying to tabulate the results on behalf and provide them to the party and trying to fill in some of those gaps uh, that exist. And now we're kind of in a wait and see period to see when exactly those results will come out, if there are any other questions or if there were issues in certain precincts. Uh, we don't know yet what any of that will look like. It will just take the results kind of coming out and, you know, more information coming to light today. And President Trump, we know he's criticized this whole debacle and what's happened in Iowa. What is the Republican Party in Iowa saying about it? So the, the state party chairman last night tweeted uh, that he stands with Troy Price in this um, and that accuracy is more important than deadlines. Uh, of course, the Iowa Democratic Party and the Iowa Republican Party have a shared interest in trying to keep Iowa's first in the nation caucus status. They have written op-eds together defending it. Uh, they go on television and on the radio together defending it. It is a process uh, where they see very much bipartisan support in an era where you don't often see that uh, too, too much anymore. Uh, but he tweeted out his support last night, the Republican Party chair um, here in Iowa, saying we are with you in this, and that's because they view this as an issue uh, of mutual interest, having successful and accurate caucuses. Well, that's good. Some bipartisan support in this. Adam, thank you.